Good morning, guys. Today we are working on running our wires. So here we have our outlet box for our receptacle. This box. is a receptacle box. <laughs> wires everywhere. We're Gavin and Emily. And we bought a school bus to convert into our own tiny home on wheels. These are our adventures. Uh, this is a pretty daunting step for us. Neither of us have any experience doing electrical work, so we've done as much research as we can, and we'll see how it goes. The plan is to run our wiring for all of our 12 volt appliances, so our overhead lighting, our fridge is gonna be 12 volt, um, we're trying to run as many things on 12 volt power as we can because it is more efficient with our solar panels. But we will also be running some 110 volt or AC power with this other wire. Um, and that will just be for any of like your household appliances. So our computer chargers, if we have any kitchen appliances we bring on the bus, things like that. So we're gonna be trying to run both of those today. Um, thankfully, Gavin's Uncle Roland is coming today. He has experience doing electrical work, so he can hopefully tell us if, we are, if we're doing everything wrong and help us fix it. Um, we're gonna start by mapping out our layout on the floor just so we can see you know, where our fridge is gonna be and run our wires directly to that spot. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've done a general marking of where we want things. I've just stuck a piece of tape um, anywhere where we're gonna have wires running to. So this says 12 volt light. We've got two lights in the bedroom. Um, and then we've also got tape for any of our 110 outlets. So we're gonna have an outlet in the kitchen, an outlet over in our like seating couch area, and then an outlet back in the bedroom area, um, anywhere we think we're gonna wanna use our laptops. So um, right now we are just working on figuring out where we want to set up all of our batteries, our charge controller, our inverter, because they take up a lot of space. And we think we want to put them under the couch. Um, we just need to figure out the layout because they're big. So we have these six batteries, six uh, 100 amp batteries, our giant 100 amp charge controller, and then we'll also have a pretty big inverter. Um, and we're gonna have to figure out how to fit all that under the couch. Our wire from our solar panels is gonna come through the roof right about here. So we wanna minimize the distance from the connection from, from our solar panels to our charge controller, um, just because I think it's more efficient. The shorter the distance, you don't need as big of a wire. So yeah. That's where we at right now. Gavin's outside showing his brother how to use the motorcycle. We're being very productive. <laughs> Alright, so yesterday Gavin's Uncle Roland was here and he helped us enormously. We want to give him a huge shout out, huge thank you. We got 99% of our wires run for both our 12 volt and our 110 or AC 
um, appliances and outlets and everything. So I'm gonna walk you through what we did, the wires we used, um, try and make it a little bit easier. Also, I just wanna say that this is not a how-to. We are not professionals. This is just how we did it. Um, hopefully, if you're building a bus, this will be helpful for you. I'll leave some of the videos that I watched that helped me a lot um, down in the description. Mostly Gus the Struggle Bus, huge shout out to them. Um, and let's get to it. So I'm gonna start with our 12 volt system. We picked up this 14 gauge stranded wire. We got red and black, red for our positive, black for the negative or ground. Uh, we specifically got stranded wire because solid wire supposedly when you're living in a bus, something that moves, vibrates like an RV or boat or whatever, um, the solid wire is prone to breaking. So you wanna make sure you get the stranded wire if you're making a schoolie. Um, this 12 volt wire is what we used to run to our lights, our fridge, our water pump, anything that's gonna be using 12 volt electricity. So like USB outlets to charge your phone, um, our composting toilet fan is a 12 volt, our max air fan is 12 volt. So we had to run these wires to every single one of those points on the bus. All right, we've run I believe all of our 12 volt wires, so we have them all collecting here where our battery bank will be at the front of the bus. We have a few um, outlet up here. We have one run for our backup camera. We have some lights in the ceiling. We have our toilet. We have our, didn't need one for our stove because that won't be on 12 volt. Fridge, more lights. We have our water pump. And we'll have a couple outlets here for both AC and DC power where we'll control everything and switches for our lights. A few lights for underneath the bed. And I think we're ready to move on to our AC lines. Woo! So that's the basics of our 12 volt wiring. Um, if you have any questions about our 12 volt wiring, drop them down in the comments. We will be happy to chat about what we did. Uh, but on to our AC or our 110 volts. If you do it like this, if you unroll it like this, it stays simply straighter. Oh, a trick. As I fall off the step. <laughs> <laughs> outlet box for our receptacle This box. is the receptacle box. <laughs> <laughs> this is the outlet for your receptacle. For my receptacle. There you go. <laughs> Which we're going to attach to our frame somewhere down here. So this is the outlet, well it's going to be the outlet for under our table in our little booth area this when we're working hard. We'll make all our money. <laughs> I'm not relying on you little fella. So this wire is a little easier to run than the 12 volt wiring because you only need one wire. You don't need the red and the black, you just need this yellow guy. Um, so we ran our 110 volt system from our battery bank, just like the 12 volt wire. You can see there's extra here to anywhere we wanted a normal household outlet. So we're gonna put a household outlet here. This is gonna be under our booth where our table uh, couch situation will be. And we installed a little outlet box. Um, so the wire just comes through out there. You can see again, we left a little extra so that we can install the outlet later and it's just tucked in its box for now. So this first outlet box was super easy because it's right next to the battery bank. Really short wire, straight from the battery to the outlet box. For anything on the other side of the bus, we did the same thing as with our 12 volt wires. We took our 12-2 wire, ran it across the ceiling, through our rubber grommet, all the way down. So this will allow us then to have, again, a normal household outlet in our bedroom area where we can plug in our laptops or whatever. 
and then we will have a closet here where this wire will then connect to our kitchen outlet. So a wall here, the start of our kitchen, another household outlet for any kitchen appliances we want to plug in. So yeah, we're only having three 110 volt outlets in our bus. Um, we kind of figured that we don't have that many household appliances that we need to plug in. So three should be enough in this small space. We can kind of reach one from any room that we're in and we should be fine. What kind of outlet do you want to put on the kitchen side? Um, on the kitchen side, we're going to have a double duplex receptacle, which is when you have like two outlets next to each other, you know, in the house and you have a little block and there's four guys, right? Yeah. So we'll have four plugs, four outlets, four receptacles. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's all sorts of special terms. <laughs> Making sure none of you electricians are offended by our vocabulary. <laughs> Wires and receptacles, yay! Thank you, Uncle Roland, for trying to steer us on the right path. <laughs> All right, now let's do some cable management and clean this bus up. We were very careful to label both ends of everything so that I could say, oh, here's backup camera, the other end of it. I know what that is. So we have a big tangle here. If our labels fall off, it'll be very annoying, but everything's labeled right now and looking good. Over here, we've pretty much crossed over everything that we're gonna have on this side. We have some cable ties that will have everything sitting more flush to the ceiling so that once we insulate, it's all just stuck up there and out of the way. Anytime we're running through metal, we wanna have one of these rubber grommets on there so the vibrations of the bus don't have our wire insulation rubbing against the metal and eventually cutting through. So we have to pick up a few more of those today and we'll go back and put them around any of these holes that don't have them right now. We're a little bit more organized now. We've got a bunch of loops in the ceiling to hold our wires up. We got all the grommets that we didn't previously have. And for all our holes where we have wires running through, we have nail plates so that we don't accidentally drill or nail straight through all of our wires. So everything's looking pretty protected. It's looking a little bit more organized, just a little bit more work to get it ready for insulation. Thanks for watching. For this weekend, we're done. We had a lot of guests over and didn't film as much as we normally do. So if you have any questions about how we ran some of these wires, or anything that we did, please let us know in the comments section. And next week we will start working on prepping for insulation. So we'll make sure that all our wires are where, exactly where we want them um, and kind of tape everything off that we don't want insulated. And then we'll be dropping it off to get spray foamed. So stay tuned and make sure you guys subscribe because this bus is gonna start looking like a house pretty soon. <laughs> See you next week. See you next Bye. week. Love you. Love you. <laughs> but this wire is actually a lot easier when you are, um, oh, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> okay. <laughs>